Okay, we're going to be talking about the number one reason students fail square root questions. So this is going to be definitely um, appropriate for anybody who's studying square roots, probably you know at the middle school level, high school level, even college level. So this uh, particular um, misunderstanding or, or mistake students make cost people a lot of points on the test. And it's something very easy to um, understand and grasp if you truly understand square roots. It's not difficult, but it's um, kind of one of those things that if something's simple, we, we kind of tend to forget it. But in this case, it's um, uh, essential when we're talking about square roots that you understand it. So we're going to get into that in a second. If you're new to my videos, I um, uh, hope you uh, consider checking out my channel and maybe become a, a subscriber. Literally have hundreds of videos on various math topics. And if you enjoy my uh, teaching style, uh, you may want to check out my comprehensive courses at my Tabit Class Academy. I'll leave the link uh, to those courses in the description of this video. But with that being said, let's jump into it. So the no number one reason students fail square root questions. So I'm going to give you a little pop quiz here. Let's go ahead and just say, hey, can you take the square root of four? Okay, so let's just see. I'm going to define what the square root is, but let's just see if you know that. Now, probably I'm thinking 50% of you, more or less, okay, answered, maybe maybe even uh, uh, more, said the answer is two. And I would tell you, yes, kind of, sort of. You get 50% credit. So let's say this was a pop quiz and the question was worth 10 points, okay, and I said uh, find the square root of four and you told me two, I would give you minus five. So you get a five out of 10 on that quiz, 50%, which is not too good. Now you're probably saying, well, what are you talking about? And I definitely know two is the right answer and you're giving me some points to it. And so this is where we're going to get in to this main uh, misunderstanding. It's not a misunderstanding. It's a failure to focus or failure to really have a full comprehension of square roots. Okay. So we're going to get into it now. Let me erase this. Now you might be thinking to yourself, boy, I'm a harsh grader in math. I used to give this particular type of quiz and I would tell my students in advance, this quiz is coming. You know what I'm be looking for. It's the easiest quiz to get 100% and students would still mess it up. And that's another kind of uh, lesson. You gotta always pay attention to what your teacher is saying. Okay, so what is the square root? So let's go to back to the square root of four. So the square root is so, um, basically, when you're taking the square root of a number, you're looking for some number times itself, okay? Some number times itself that gets you back to the number underneath the square root. Let's use an, um, something like a square root of 16, because this will this, uh, actually kind of demonstrate this a little bit better, okay? So square root of 16 is some number times itself will get you back to 16. So what is that number, okay? Well, in this case, some of you might say, well, you're thinking, okay, some number times itself, a lot of students say, well, eight times two is 16. So no, it's not any two numbers such that you multiply is 16, i.e. they're not factors of 16. The square root has to be the exact same number. So if this is gonna be four, this has to be four. So four times four is 16, right? So that's the definition of a uh, square root. Some number times itself, gets you back to the number underneath the square root. So in this case, you're saying, well, this is good, right? The square root of four is equal to two because two times two is equal to four. And that's very good. Yes, you're on the right track, but here is the deal. There is a complete other set of numbers or another set, another solution to this scenario, okay? What other number times itself gets you back to a positive 16. So in this case, it's negative four, right? So negative four times negative four is also positive 16. So this is the other half of the solution. So here, when we have the square root of four, the answer is two and negative two, okay? And I can tell you right now, 75%, I bet, I mean, there's no way for me to know, and you know, only you can be honest with yourself and don't feel bad because this is a common mistake. Probably the majority of you initially said two, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you go into your calculator, your calculator, most of you have a little square root function on your calculator, it's going to give you 
um, too. And you're like, yeah, well, this is this is why you can't just overly depend on your calculator, and um, you have to know something a little bit beyond what the calculator is spitting out. Now, we're going to go ahead and talk. I'm going to kind of take this into another little bit different direction to see why this is important. Okay, so here we have the square root of four. It's equal to both two and negative two. Now, the appropriate notation for this, what you should be writing, is the square root of four is equal to positive and negative two. So because this two right here is actually a positive two. So if you see this plus or minus two, that is, this is actually the most cor uh, correct way to, to write this. Now, what we're studying, okay, here, this is all part of what we call the real number system. Real numbers. So this is just a number line. So I have zero here, I have one, I have two, I have negative one, negative two, and all the decimals, positive, negative fractions, everything else in between, right? So this is the real number system. It's pretty much the number system that, you know, you've been working with elementary school, middle school, and even in high school, okay? So these numbers here, positive two would be right here, and negative two would be right there. These guys um, are part of the real number system, okay? Now, why am I saying that? Well, let's look at another question, okay? What is the square root of negative four? What is the square root of negative four? So the same question applies, or same uh, process, okay? We're looking for some number times itself that gets me back to not a positive four. This time we're looking to get back to a negative four, okay? So what number times itself gets you back to negative four? Now, some of you might be like, oh, it's negative four. No, negative four times negative four is positive four, okay? If you don't know that, a negative times a negative is positive, and a positive times a positive is, whoops, here, let's, uh, this should be two, actually. <laughs> Stuck on the negative four. So negative two times negative two is equal to a positive four. And uh, positive 2 times positive 2 is equal to positive 4. And it can't be a negative 2 times positive 2 because these are not the same number. Okay, Remember, when we're taking the square root, they have to be the exact same number. So go into your calculator, if you have your calculator handy, and go in and, and try to find the square root of negative 4. Okay, If you have your calculator there available, unless it's an advanced scientific calculator, most of you, when you do this, are going to get an error. Your calculator is going to be like, I don't like that. I don't know what you're talking about here. It's going to be like, uh, because I can't figure it out, right? I, there is no number such that we can multiply it by itself that will get back to negative four. So your calculator is like, I don't understand the question, etc. So, because your calculator is thinking on the real number system, okay? So to solve this scenario, or to help us out and solve this problem, because there in fact is an answer, okay? The square root of negative four is just not some unsolvable thing in math. It's actually the answer, okay, I'm gonna write the answer, plus or minus two i, okay? The answer is not completely on the real number system. So we have the real number system over here, and then all these numbers right here are contained in the real number system, okay? But we also have this other bigger number system called the complex number system, which the real numbers are actually are part of, okay? So the complex number system in, uh, um, has included in itself the real number system, and this number, these are called imaginary numbers, live inside the complex number system. So you're like, oh boy, we're like dealing with different number systems. Yes, we are, okay? So when we're talking about square roots, okay, it's very, very important to uh, be, you know, highly specific in your answer, okay? Because you're, you're one, you're going to let your teacher know that you know what you're talking about, right? So let's take a look at a scenario real quick. Let's say we had x squared is equal to 4. So basic in, uh, equation, okay? Now, this is what we call a quadratic equation. And because there's a little 2 up there, this tells me that this solution must have... Let me actually just change this here so we can use a different number. Uh, let's say 9. Okay. So x squared equals 9. So that little 2 up there 
I don't want to get too far off on a tangent, but I want you to know that this little two and this type of equation tells us that there must be two solutions. This equation must have two solutions. So for some of you out there, you say, well, x squared is equal to 9. How do I solve for x? Okay, well, what you do, you're going to take the square root of both sides. So if you, the square root of x squared, let me write this over here. The square root of an x squared is x because x times itself gets me back to x squared. Okay, so square root of x squared is x. And x equals is the answer, right? I'm trying to figure out what, what does x equal to. So if you rush through this problem and you said, oh, okay, x squared is equal to 9. Oh, I already know that the square root of x squared is x. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 9 is 3. Done. Many, many, many students, even taking college algebra, will, will, will give me, the teacher, an answer like this. And then when I give them 5 out of 10 points, 50%, uh, they, they, you know, they go into tears. You know, they're like, ah, you know, screaming, yelling, not fair, not fair. Listen, it is fair because you only give me half of the answer. I don't care if it's easy. It's not what I guess I'm getting across to you is it's not trivial that it says plus or minus three. There's these are two uh, two distinct uh, answers. Okay, two separate numbers. So I'm trying to stress to you: do not make this mistake. And if you don't make this mistake early on, you're going to rack up a lot of points through little quizzes, tests, etc. And you know you're going to you know you're going to do great. And that's the whole idea of my videos. So number one reason students fail square root questions is just not understanding especially when we're dealing with real numbers, that there, that every square root of a real number, okay, will have both a positive and negative version to it. All right, so let's just go and wrap it up from there. Again, um, you know, if you like my teaching style and you think that, hey, you're getting something out of my math uh, uh, videos, hopefully you'll become a subscriber. Hit that bell notification if you do. If you want to really get into some uh, math with my full courses, I'll leave the link in the description to my Tabit Class Math Academy. Hey, if you liked the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up and then leave me some feedback. You know, it's always good for me to see what you're thinking about uh, my videos. It also gives me ideas on uh, future videos. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate your time and have a great day.